this is my second attempt at recording this because the last time I recorded this, half my face was chopped off. So hopefully this angle is gonna be a lot better. Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to today's video. I thought, if you couldn't tell from the title, it would be nice to do a book tag video. I did a similar book tag at the beginning of spring because I thought it was a really lovely way to kick off the season and I just want to bring book tags back. I think book tags are so so fun. I love hearing like the different answers that people give to them and it just reminds me of like older booktube. It just it brings back good memories. So today I'm going to be doing the Cozy Autumn book tag that was created by the Book Bell. I'll make sure to link the original video down below so make sure to go check it out and I'll leave the questions down below as well if you want to do the tag yourselves. Let's not ramble, let's just get straight into the book tag. So question one is what book always reminds you of fall slash autumn? Now this <laughs> This book in particular reminds me of fall slash autumn for obvious reasons. I think what I'll do is I'll show you the book and then I'll explain why. So my book to this is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Now, have I read this book? No. Do I try to read it every October in the attempt to have it on my read list and finally say I've read a classic? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Every autumn, I attempt to pick this book up because I have heard from many, many people that if you're trying to get into classics, Frankenstein is a really good place to start. I've heard that apparently it's like a really easy classic read. The way that Mary Shelley writes is really well for its time and apparently really easy as a classic. Have I failed every autumn? Yes, I have. I don't know why, but I just struggle to make it past the first couple of chapters. But I feel like, I feel like if I just push through, I would really enjoy it. But I am just struggling. I'm struggling to get through this book. And I pick it up every year, every October in the attempt to read it and I fail. So <laughs> that is why I have picked this as the answer to the first question because if I think of a book for autumn and fall Frankenstein always comes to mind it just it haunts me this book haunts me and that's not a pun in any sense this book actually haunts me <laughs> okay question two what is your favorite autumnal book cover so for this one I chose two books because I really struggled between the two so the first one I picked was Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands for very obvious reasons. I mean, look at this. The gold foiling, the like beautiful brown leaves with the acorns and the pine cones. We've got some mushrooms down here. I just think this cover screams early autumn beautifully. I love it. I'm a sucker for it. Am I a bit biased? And possibly. But these covers in general are just stunning. And yeah, early autumn, I think, is this represents beautifully. But then the other one that I chose was the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore by Laurie Gilmore. Again, we've got some beautiful gold foiling as like autumnal leaves. You've got like autumnal bunting in the windows of the bookshop. You've got some cinnamon buns. You've got a little cat walking into the shop. This just screams autumn and so does Pumpkin Spice Cafe. If I had that book as well, this, I would have definitely chosen that. I just think these two books, the gold foiling, the colour palette, everything. I just think these two covers scream autumn. Question three, what is your favourite autumnal drink to read with? Now, usually I just go with a classic cup of breakfast tea whether that be like an English breakfast or like a tippy assam an assam of some kind with a splash of milk and a spoonful of honey or sugar however recently there is a new love in my life when it comes to hot drinks and that is this white hot chocolate by Wittards of well Wittard of Chelsea 
Um, it is their new apple strudel white hot chocolate that they launched with their autumn range. Guys, when I tell you this is one of the most amazing drinks I've ever had, it is phenomenal. If you have a sweet tooth, because it is a white hot chocolate, so it is quite sweet, but if you like your cinnamony, caramelised kind of flavours, and like the subtle sweetness of apple that's in this as well, oh my gosh, it is just so good. Smells phenomenal and the fact that they've even got like the buttery pastry flavoring in there as well it's just oh it's so good it's so so good I would highly recommend they've just got it so right they just beautiful 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 okay question four do you prefer to read late at night or early in the morning I definitely prefer to read late at night I am an early bird I rise quite early but when I rise, I'm up. I'm not one to linger. I want to be up and moving and getting my day started. So I'm not one to then kind of sit and read, even though that's exactly what I did this morning. <laughs> but I do definitely prefer to use reading as like my unwind downtime. So I definitely read more in the like afternoon evenings, 100%. Question five, Halloween is coming. What is your favourite spooky read? Now, I don't have a favourite spooky read per se because I don't really read spooky books. <laughs> I just don't really do horror and things like that. It's just not for me. I was debating on going with one of the murder mysteries that I've recently read for this question. But while I was looking at my bookshelf, I saw this book and I kind of forgot about it. I read this a couple of years ago during autumn and I realised it's actually a really perfect autumnal read. Um, that is Gilded by Marissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer just does fairy tale retellings brilliantly. She does them so, so well. And the Gilded duology is her retelling of Rumpelstiltskin. Her originality and her twists um, in these books are just unmatched. I am yet to find an author who has that whimsy that Marissa Meyer has. I think the closest I've gotten to it possibly would be Stephanie Garber with Caraval, but I, that's the only Stephanie Garber book that I've read, where I've, I've read a lot more Marissa Meyer. But the setting of this book, the descriptions of the land and the environment, is just beautiful. I'm pretty sure this is kind of set, I want to say it's set throughout a year, but the timelines are revolving around like moon phases and like the autumn equinox and things like that. It really brings in that whimsical, magical element into its story, into its timeline. And there's also some really creepy descriptions in this book, but not to the point where it like freaked me out entirely, because again, this is Marissa Meyer, but she just was able to have this really unsettling, eerie tone throughout the whole book that was just brilliant. And it set the scene so perfectly for this story. The character, some of the characters and things in this book are really creepy as well, but not to the point where I couldn't read it because it freaked me out so much, you know? So I would highly recommend this book if you want to read a spooky book, but you're not into like horror and things like that. Marissa Meyer is so good with her fairy tale retellings. And I feel like this duology hasn't really been given a lot of attention. Um, I think she's more known for her standalone Heartless and then the Lunar Chronicles, which again are brilliant books, really recommend. But I feel like this duology went a little bit under the radar. And again, gold foiling, you cannot go wrong with a bit of gold foiling. Fantasy romance, there's a romance plot in this as well, which was so good. Highly, highly recommend if you're a fantasy romance reader. Question six, what is the ultimate comfort read for you? I'm not gonna linger on this question because I feel like the answer is obvious if you've seen any of my previous videos, been around on my channel for a little while. Howl's Moving Castle by Diane Wayne Jones. It's my favourite book of all time. I read it every year. 
even though I read it in the spring and summer, you can definitely read this in the autumn. It has your classic cosy fantasy childlike magic in there. You've got witches, wizards, magical talking demons, curses, but it's also it's hilarious. It's such a funny book. It's such a fun, adventurous, but cosy, whimsical, wonderfulness all wrapped up in this book. If you haven't read this book, please, please read this book. I cannot rant and rave about it enough. Even if you've seen the Studio Ghibli movie, Howl's Moving Castle, that was obviously inspired by this book, please read this book anyways, because yes, there are similarities, but they also are so different. So that's it. That's all I have to say. Please read it if you haven't already. You can read it right now. Just go read it. Go read it. Add it to your autumn TBR, please. And thank you. Question seven. What is your favourite autumnal reading snack? For me, just some sort of classic dunking biscuit or actually no every year Mr Kipling released these toffee pastry swirl things every autumn and they are my favourite thing to snack with with a cup of tea it just pairs so well and like the pastry is just so crumbly it's like a shortbready kind of is it like Venice swirl that could be completely wrong but oh so good so scrummy they only release that flavor during this time of year and I go through a box of them like that <laughs> question eight what is your favorite autumnal candle to burn whilst reading um so at the moment I do have this cozy amber candle that I got from Primark oh, it smells so good it has it does have that kind of sweet vanilla undertone to it however if I'm not burning that I have this little ghost oil burner he's adorable and what I burn in him is this orange and star anise oil like wax oh it's so so good the spices that they have in here are just so scrummy you've got like your cinnamon cardamom classic spices in there it's by the company True Aroma. I got this in the range. I got it a couple of years ago, but I'm sure you can probably find something very similar to it. Because I feel like this time of year, you do get your pumpkin spice vanilla scents and they are so sweet. And those kind of scents tend to give me headaches. So I much prefer to go for the more woodsy, spicy scents rather than the sweet sense and this is just absolutely perfect yeah I much prefer the more spicy cinnamony cardamom star anise orange citrusy smells rather than your sweet vanilla smells <laughs> syrupy smells <laughs> question nine when you're not reading what is your favorite autumnal activity now this is one that you don't have to do just in the autumn you can do this any time of the year but I have recently gotten into colouring it has just become such a comfort activity for me specifically colouring with watercolour pens and like felt tip pens there's just something so satisfying about it that I love 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 wrapping up in a blanket putting on a comfort show like Gilmore Girls or Modern Family is one I've been watching recently and then just mindlessly colouring it's just such a lovely way to switch off the brain. So if you haven't tried out colouring as like a cosy activity, I would highly, highly recommend it. Question 10. What is on your autumn slash fall reading list? Now, I have done a whole video on my autumn TBR, so please go check that out if you haven't done already. But what I thought I would show you is what I'm currently reading, which is on that list. And that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is my first step into dark academia. I'm only like 95 pages in, but I am really enjoying it so far. I've still got a lot to learn about the backstory of our characters, but I'm really loving the kind of dark magic she's introduced in this book. I'm finding it really interesting how she's interwoven it into your classic dark academia you know, like university, campus, privileged-esque world. I just think it's really, really fascinating and quite an interesting twist on that genre. 
Um, but again, like I said, this is my first time reading a Dark Academia. So I'm obviously very well aware that other Dark Academias don't always have that magical element to them. A lot of them are kind of revolving around a murder, which does occur in this book. That's not a spoiler, it says it on the back. So it still has that staple Dark Academia trope in there, but with this extra sprinkling of magic which I think is really fun. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. I could see this being like, so far it's kind of sitting at a four out of five. Okay, my lovely. So that is the cozy autumn book tag. Like I said, I will leave the original video and the questions in the description if you want to give this tag a go yourself. Please let me know in the comments any of the answers you have to the questions. I would love to know them. But yeah, I hope you're having a fabulous start to your autumnal season. October is just around the corner, which means pumpkin picking, spooky movies can start to be watched, spooky books can be read if that's your kind of thing. And we are now past the autumn equinox, which means days are getting shorter, nights are getting longer. So light those candles, turn on your twinkly lights, get wrapped up in cozy blankets and drink cozy drinks. Because guys, autumn is here and I am ready for it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!